Um, ba -ba -bum! Greetings, gentle sentience. Last Outrider back here with the next part of Who Are the Salamanders? This time we're talking about the nine artifacts of Vulcan. And afterwards, I will give more details on why I believe Vulcan is the next Emperor replacement. Because people asked. <clears throat> As the close of the 41st millennium approaches, five of the nine hidden artifacts of Vulcan have been recovered, three of which are personally borne by Vulcan Histan himself. The Forge Father is protected by Kasari's mantle, the legendary scaled cloak taken from the skin of a drake slain by the Primarch. In his right hand, he carries the Spear of Vulcan, a weapon forged by Vulcan himself, its incandescent blade so powerful it can set even ceramite ablaze. Hastan's other hand is encased within the gauntlet of the forge, a mailed fist cunningly wrought to summon fire at need. This is the one artifact that Hastan is most proud of, for he himself recovered it. The tale of how he took it from the Eldar pirate, Lord Ayath Bloodweaver, after defeating his war host in a battle is just one of the dozens that are told about Histan. So if you didn't get that, apparently, this uh, Fist of the Forge was uh, in the possession of the Dark Eldar since they lost it from the got it from the Primarch Lord Iath Bloodweaver. <clears throat> ha! Inexorably linked to the Primarch and bearing his own weapons of war, the Forge Father is the closest connection to the chapter's long lost progenitor. There has always been a palpable aura of power and legend about the chapter's forefathers. Forge fathers, it is a deep-rooted respect, equal to that afforded to the chapter master. Known to them as the Regent of Prometheus. Aha, there you go. So they don't call him chapter master. They call the head of the uh, Salamander's Legion the Regent of Prometheus. Hastan is making his mark. However, ranking him high amongst the greatest of Forge Fathers, he still, yet, still, his task remains incomplete. In addition to the three items carried by Hastan, Two others have been found. One is the forge ship, the Chalice of Fire. Within that vast craft are manufactorums that provide the salamanders with their weapons of war. The second item is the Eye of Vulcan, a space-bound defense laser assembly that stands eternal vigil over the Salamander's Fortress Monastery. Wow, okay, that's pretty cool. So the Chalice of Fire is one of the artifacts of Vulcan. Of the remaining artifacts, the Engine of Woes, the Obsidian Chariot, the Unbound Flame, and the Song of Entropy are the names that are known. Size, form, and location are locked, hidden away in code within the Tome of Fire, there to be uncovered as the Primarch's teachings, wisdom, and prophecies reveal themselves. <laughs> what do you think that's going to be? Okay, the next part is going to be the final quest of Vulcan Hastan. What could that be? Now, why do I think Vulcan is the next emperor? It's simple. Uh, from the book Vulcan Lives. If you haven't read it, spoiler alert, I'm about to tell you everything that happens in it. Here's what happens. 
Vulcan is immortal. He cannot die. Literally cannot die. At Istvan, after that blast that killed him, he just rematerialized somewhere. Apparently, uh, Conrad Cruz found him, though, or I should just say the, the, the um, Night Lords found him. So if you want a little inter-chapter, inter-legion rivalry here, here you go. Salamanders hate Night Lords, and here's why. They found, they captured Vulcan, I guess, uh, and Conrad Cruz proceeded to kill him. And which, to his surprise, Vulcan came back alive. So, Cruz killed him again. And Vulcan came back alive. He, he noticed a trend here. So it became his hobby to try to figure out, is it possible to kill Vulcan? If any of you are comic fans and you know Superman, Vulcan is basically doomsday at this point. He's been killed 100,000, 200,000 times, each different way by Conrad Cruz over the years. Uh, he only has just escaped. Uh, wait, how did he, did he escape? No, I think, yeah, he was shot from orbit, I think, was the last time. Yeah, they dropped him from orbit. He basically burned up in the atmosphere, literally fell down, boom, smashed from orbit onto uh, <laughs> onto the Ultramarines world. I was it was it Craig? Uh, and, and from orbit. Okay? Vulcan was still alive. So there you go. That, I guess, was 100,001 100, death. So what happens then? Um, he's then hunted down by another immortal. I forget his name. It was John Grammaton or something like that. Another immortal. Somebody who cannot die. This person is armed with a weapon, which is supposed to be a materialized uh, spear point or sword point of the emperor's energy in physical form. Literally, the power of the Emperor made manifest, carried by another immortal sent by the Cabal to kill Vulcan, because Vulcan is predicted to be the savior of humanity, and the Cabal just wants humanity to go extinct. So they sent him to kill and assassinate Vulcan uh, um, so that humanity won't be saved. They believe that this special weapon, which is the manifested power of the Emperor, is enough to overcome Vulcan's immortality. So what happens instead? Instead, uh, this guy, John, he decides to disobey his orders and use the power of the Emperor to... Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a little part. Vulcan is insane. Just like Doomsday in the Superman comics. He's gone completely wacko. Total psychopath. Uh, um, after being killed 100,000 times, you know, that, that can happen to you. So he's no longer the Primarch. He has no memories of anything about a Primarch. He only knows one thing. He wants to kill Conrad Cruz. Period. So he's like a mixture of Doomsday and the Hulk. You can't talk to him. It, 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 you talking to Vulcan would be like talking to the Hulk on a rampage. It's not working. So, uh, John stabs Vulcan with this divine weapon, and if that's and and instead of channeling channeling that weapon to kill Vulcan, he channels the inner energy to heal Vulcan, heal his shattered brain. On top of that, he decides to take it a step further and channel in his own spirit as well as the Emperor's. He channels in all of his immortal energy. By the time he's done, he's no longer immortal. He's just a regular human. So he put both of those energies into Vulcan, who's already a Primarch and was immortal before that, who do you think is going to wake up? 
he, he didn't wake up. That was what happened. The sword was stuck in him. They couldn't pull it out. It was like a sword in the stone thing. Nothing can pull it out. It doesn't even shake or budge. Vulcan's in a coma. Um, and we're, we're guessing now that he'll wake up when the other four artifacts are found. Now, that's what I'm saying. Whoever's going to be waking up isn't Vulcan the Primarch. It's Vulcan the... Whoever is going to replace the Emperor being is going to be. That's my prediction. Until next time. Bye. What do you think? Am I right? Let me know.